don't, no, no, li listen, listen. Hello? Does he know you've come out to the payphone? Hello, sir. Right, so you're safe at the payphone, yes? Oh, I think I am. I've got my baby with me. OK, right. Ha Sorry, you've got a problem. Is he with you now, caller? Yeah, thanks, Exchange. Is Paula, is he... Is he with you now? Have you had an accident? Is that what you're to tell me? I'll get police straight there, OK? Yeah. We left his dog here behind him. Yeah. He's back again. He's come back again. Yeah, don't worry, mate. You wait at the phone box, yeah? Yeah, there's three cars on way to you, OK? Yeah, OK. All right, Mary, they'll be with you. No. Yeah. I'll let you go now, OK, Mary? Go and speak to the police. Yeah, but Mary, 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 go and tell the policeman there, OK? Thank Goodbye. You. Last year, the Metropolitan Police in London dealt with nearly one and a half million emergency calls, and everyone came through here, the information room at Scotland Yard. It's the world's largest computerised police control room. It's at the centre of a vast network of services primed for immediate 24-hour response on land, sea and air. Sounds of glass being smashed, persons running away. For the benefit of all Townlink uh, users, looking for a plus or male dark hair, dark glasses. They've done a snatch from uh, m &S. Within seconds, they can call on cars, foot patrols, boats and helicopters to go to incidents over 780 square miles in an average time of 12 minutes. In the first couple of seconds from answering a call, you can tell if it's going to be grief. And you can also almost immediately tell what the call's going to be about. Because obviously, if you can hear all the disturbance, you know it's going to be fight or a domestic. Or if you've got a nice, calm person, nine times out of ten now, burglaries. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to calm down. Can I have a telephone number? Hello? Yep. Hold on a minute, call Operator, you're going to have to hang on a second. OK. Hello, and what's the problem? And where do you live? Everybody that calls, you've got that initial, oof, I need a placement, Bosch, and you've got to try and say, why do you want a placement? You've got to peel away the layer of frustration, anger, panic and get to the nitty-gritty. You're arguing with your mother-in-law? No, it's, no, it's not me. No, it's my not in laws Yeah, yeah, your in-laws are arguing with... Yeah, is it your in-laws, your, your mother-in-law and your father-in-law are arguing between themselves? No, I haven't got father. Right, fine. So who's arguing with your in-laws? Is it you? Is it you? Yes. Right, so you've got an argument with your in-laws. What's the argument about and what's the problem? Why, why have they pulled a knife on you? Why have they pulled a knife on you? It does build from time to time. <laughs> I've got to state it. You know, it can be stressful, but uh, certainly not as stressful as the officers out on the street dealing with incidents face to face. But when you get somebody phone up that, uh, that tells you over the telephone that they've just murdered somebody, um, or when they phone up and they've been injured and they're actually dying while they're talking to you, um, that, that in itself can be quite stressful. And how do you know this man's an escaped that prisoner? No. So Where's he escaped from, do you know? Most calls go out from the yard to the Met's 66 local divisions, the backbone of the police emergency response service. Policing a city the size of London is no easy task, and they have to tackle everything from domestic violence and road accidents to burglary, robbery and assault. The yard is connected to smaller control rooms in each of these divisions, such as this one at Ilford. Hello. How much petrol did they steal? Ten pounds. One one three receiving. They communicate by computer, and the yard or the local division can send units to the scene. Yeah, Eve Echo. W Whiskey E Bravo U Uniform. Let's go ahead. Calling Juliet three. Go ahead. It's 4.36 on a Friday afternoon. A call has come from the yard that an eight-year-old girl is missing. Police constables Ray Davis and Ashley Cooper have been assigned to look for her. Unfortunately, we've had um, a few attempted abductions over the last week from schools. So, um, 
any approach or any children that are lost or missing we treat the top of that sort of Yeah, Julia and Phil have seen a lot of park, have That's all right, don't worry, darling. What does she look like? Where, where did you last see her? Just stay against the car for a minute. Where did you last see her? Now, well, calm down. It's important you stay calm so we find out where she is, yeah? Well, I told her and her friend told me that the park was round the corner from Grange Road. Mm -hmm. I allowed her to go. Where's her friend now? There's her friend there. Hi, Hello. What's, what's your name? So and what does she look like? Do you want to come over here, Nick, and tell me what's happened? Um, Do you know where she is? Uh, yeah. No. Um, when I was in the park, yeah, she got the ump. The ump, yeah, and she just went running off. Can you, can you tell us what she was wearing? Um, she was wearing a black naff coat and black leggings. She's about her height, is she? Right, OK, so she's got a black naff coat, black leggings. Do you remember what shoes she's wearing? Did you found the way back to Grange Road, no. do you think? We're having a great time out on the road. Julia India from uh, 289. It seems the lost girl has made her way towards, I think it's Staines Road entrance of the park. I'm uh, on my way, little girl, now to uh, see if we can see her over. So, where, where did you lose sight of her? Can you remember? So, how long ago did she leave you to go to the park then? Um, but... Well, you haven't seen a little eight-year-old girl with a black jacket, black leggings, no, lost. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. That's that lady. She's having a look for us as well. How, how tall is she compared to you? Um, she's just about here. Right. You've not seen a young girl about eight wandering around looking lost or upset or anything the last half hour or so? OK, well, thanks very much. Yes, of course you are. She's going to be about somewhere. What? Yes, we see. They found a Richmond Road. They found her? Yeah. There you go, told you. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Well, I'm going to make sure it's here first. You don't want to take my strange one home. In the end, fears of abduction are groundless. It turns out that the girl has left the park and got lost in a road just beyond one of the entrances. Hello, police. Got the yard. Just one moment, sir. Hello, sir. Let me speak to the exchange, please. Oh, you don't understand. So which you don't understand. Oh, you don't understand. Hello, sir. Oh, it's just speak. 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 Hello, and what's the problem between you and your parents? No, listen to me. What's the problem between you and your parents? And I've been disciplining him because he's been so lost to me. I'm his mother. Oh, dear. OK. To call it yeah, all right. Hey, hey, let's all stop shouting at each other. Yeah. Yeah, listen to me. Let's stop shouting. Yeah, shouting at me is not going to get you anywhere, is it? Let's stop shouting. Talk to me sensibly. Just, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, exchange. Who was the subscriber? How many people are fighting? Ten. Ten? The Yard can call up a response by computer or by radio. The computer-aided dispatch system, or CAD, tells the communicators where the call is coming from and the name of the nearest station. They log the details and at a stroke, the whole message can be sent to any operational division in the Met area. In a real emergency, the message also goes to one of the Yard's radio dispatchers who can send officers to the scene right away. Romeo Golf, Romeo Golf, receiving MP over. Yeah, could you assist uh, Romeo 6? Each division has at least one area car with a radio link to the Yard. Tonight, the Ilford car, Juliet 3, is crewed by PC's Pat Codrington and Dave Mann. 
They don't know it yet, but they're about to assist one of the Met's three helicopters equipped with a thermal image camera capable of clear night vision. The helicopter observer has become suspicious of one car apparently trying to avoid the police who stopped another. He contacts the yard radio call sign MP to ask for assistance. The helicopter's call sign is India 99. India 99, do you have any more with the vehicle, MP? Ever? No, all I've got is a white hatchback. Uh, as I say, I'm not sure if he was trying to avoid police that uh, stopped the original Astra, but he reversed up to the left, and I'd uh, just like someone to, uh, to have a look at him. The observer's instincts tell him something is wrong, but the driver could be anyone from a joyrider to an IRA terrorist. To find out, he needs help on the ground. Is any unit then to assist Hollybush Hill towards Snesbrook Road, MP Eva? Juliet 3, Juliet 3, MP. Juliet 3, Mr. The Ilford car joins the chase. He's now um, in the viaduct to South Woodford. On over. Yeah, Juliet 3 MP, we are coming down towards Eastern Avenue to Rebbage Roundabout. Juliet 3 received. He's now coming down the Chigwell Road MP. Chigwell Road received. It's uh, left into Chigwell Road. Yes, received. The vehicle is now left into Chigwell Road. That's the last location. Left into Chigwell Road. It's all about to turn right. Yeah. He's got a left. Bye-bye. Right, the Eric car. Take the next. Take the left. Left, left, left. Right, he's in the road parallel to you on your right. The next road down parallel to your right, he's stopped halfway down the road. Yeah, turn right, the, uh, the vehicle's parking up, so take the next right. There is one with headlights on, up to your right. The first police car on the scene is Kilo 1 from Romford, but Juliet 3 is close behind. He's the driver of the car, yeah? You've been drinking? Just breathe on, right? You have been, haven't you? Well, I don't know. When you first see the area cars blatting about and people, policemen getting out fairly excited at the end of it, they are, it is because they can't control the adrenaline. Right. I'll give you another opportunity to blow this properly. If you don't blow it properly, I'll arrest you to fill in the breakfast. Yes, Depending on the incident you're dealing with, I mean, they don't expect a policeman to get out sort of with adrenaline going, quick fire conversation bit loud, you, you've got to get out like you've just, uh, just pulled around the corner and get out and weigh up the situation and deal with it as you see fit. It goes to red and orange and then finally red and you feel the test, right? So this stuff. The driver gave a positive breath test at the scene and was arrested and taken to Ilford Police Station. There he gave another positive test on more sophisticated equipment and was subsequently disqualified for a year and fined for drink driving. Yeah. You my right, well, all we can do, like... Well, you're saying that you're going to smash the alarm up if it doesn't stop. I'll shoot it. You're saying that you've got a weapon and a firearm and you're going to shoot the alarm if it doesn't stop. The calmest ones are the most dangerous because you don't know what you've got. You know, if they come on, hello, police, nice and calm and gentle. I've had an armed robbery where it's, hello, police. Oh, this is such and such, a betting office. Oh, yes, an armed robbery. Excuse me. And then you've got to you pick yourself up because you can get lulled into a nice little set. Oh, this is a nice gentle little call. I can go through it nice and gently. And then halfway through, they'll say, oh, yes, so he had a gun. What type of gun was it? Well, was it hand... Well, yeah, was it, was it a handgun or was it a rifle? The duty inspector at the yard can call on up to 14 armed response vehicles equipped to deal with firearms emergencies. With deploying armed response vehicles, it, it's really a question of the type of incident that they go to. They're a limited resource. They've got to be used wisely. We don't want them going here, there and everywhere. An example of the type of incident that we would send them to um, occurred last night, where there'd been an argument between two people. Somebody ended up getting injured, not, not with a gunshot, but ended up getting injured. Then a man was seen on a balcony of a block of flats with a handgun clearly something that we need to send an armed response vehicle to. The ARVs are manned by officers of SO19, the specialised firearms unit, who are the first line of response to any armed incident. Here they've been called to South London because a man has allegedly been holding his wife and daughter hostage and threatening to shoot himself. After two hours, negotiators persuade him to let them go and give himself up. 
they found one shotgun. Right. And they reckon the other one is, uh, according to the wife anyway, she says there's another one in an upstairs room. The man was arrested and taken in for questioning. The officers that searched actually found the shotgun. I believe they found that in here. And the ammunition was contained in this bag upstairs. The spread of firearms has brought an increase in the number of ARVs on patrol. It remains to be seen whether this will be enough to counter the growing threat to officers dealing with emergencies. As a capital city, London is a focus for terrorism. The Yard is constantly refining its techniques for organising the police response to terrorist attacks. When you've got incidents such as bomb threats where seconds count, you may only have perhaps two minutes to get a message to the local police station to get units to go to the scene to start clearing the public away to, uh, to make the area safe, then every second counts. A suspect briefcase has been discovered in Selfridge's department store on Oxford Street and the call has gone out to the explosives officers of the anti-terrorist branch. Black briefcase and leather with gold uh, combination locks. Uh, it is locked and it is heavy. Would you please leave the junction immediately? No, back the other way, sir. Back the other way. Don't argue, please. Just go the explosives the officer uses a portable X-ray machine to photograph the contents of the case. He finds nothing to indicate a bomb, and this time there's no threat to the public. But there's an ever-present risk. In recent years, two explosives officers have been killed defusing bombs. Embassies are prime terrorist targets. London plays host to no less than 140 diplomatic missions, and unlike many cities, they're not concentrated in one area. The Met's Diplomatic Protection Group is responsible for their security. Every DPG officer is armed and the police guarantee that their distinctive red vehicles will reach any embassy within two minutes of an emergency call, the quickest response time in the Met. Their baptism of fire was here at the Iranian embassy on April the 30th, 1980, when six Iranians burst in and took 35 hostages. It was the beginning of a six-day siege. One of the hostages was DPG Constable Trevor Locke, who played a key role in negotiations. His captors had no idea he was wearing a revolver under his jacket. While they guarded their prisoners with guns and grenades, he agonized about what to do. I reckoned in my own mind that I was going to possibly be able to take two out if I was going to have a go of my standard of shooting. And even if I managed to shoot one, the, the way they were holding the hand grenade, They'd fall down and the ring of the hand grenade had come out and it caused untold damage. This was what was dominating my attitude towards it. Shall I use the gun or not? These hand grenades, these green lemons as I used to call them. On May the 5th, the terrorists killed a hostage, despite getting the publicity they wanted for the plight of their homeland in Iran. Downing Street decided to storm the embassy. The control of the operation was handed from the police to the SAS. Soldiers moved into position, and a negotiator kept the terrorist leader on the phone to divert his attention. When the attack began, PC Lock jumped him and wrestled him to the floor. So I drew the gun from my holster, similar gun to this, the Smith & Western Model 10, and I put it into his forehead, like so, and he just didn't believe it. Mr Trevor's got a gun. This is the thing I've been laying on for the last six days and uh, I carried on throwing all these curses into him and he was saying, please don't hurt me, Mr Trevor, it wasn't me, it was the others. I told them what you said was true, but they wouldn't listen. They wanted to carry on, please don't hurt me. And I thought, I'm gonna kill this man. But then I realized that if I kill him, I'd be killing him for revenge and nothing else because I had him and he wasn't going anywhere. Moments later, an SAS trooper burst in and shouted at PC Lock to move away some fire, gunfire, and I looked back and there was on. And he was obviously very dead. He had a, a line of bullet holes in him and he was absolutely lifeless. I just couldn't believe only seconds earlier I'd been wrestling with this guy and uh, he was very much alive. The terrorists killed one more hostage before they were overwhelmed. Five were shot dead. 
The sole survivor is now serving a life sentence for manslaughter. Trevor Locke was awarded the George Medal and has since retired. I would have rather not have been involved in that adventure, but the one thing I am pleased about is that I didn't use the gun. I didn't have it on my conscience that I killed somebody. Unfortunately, terrorism is here. Um, I think it will not get better in the short term anyway. I think the way that uh, wars are fought, fought now will probably be in state-run terrorism, to a certain extent, rather than these enormous great standing armies that fight it out and slug it out to the death. And I think that's the way it's going to go, and therefore it will always be with us. In a capital city like London with 140 missions, whatever what, what happens at one end of the world will affect us here, or could affect us here. So we've got to be ready all the time. Tonight, there's a more common problem, a brawl at a pub in Richmond. It's too big for local officers to cope with, so the yard sends in the commissioner's reserve. The commissioner's reserve is a mobile group of about 50 officers under the direct control of the yard's duty officer. They can be sent to any major disturbance within 15 minutes. Tonight has been the sweetest, most troubled thing we night. Good. And suddenly, for some reason or other, we have been made. It's all been sorted now. No, but it's been sorted in the most incredible way. The reserve is drawn from the Territorial Support Group, the TSG. They have special skills on top of their basic training, especially in public order policing. I was back out of them. On this occasion, eight people were arrested. Seven were later convicted on charges including drunk and disorderly, threatening behaviour and actual bodily harm. Try me. Try me. I'll take you down. Try me. 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 Right. Yeah, OK, just a minute. 13 Watt Street. Yeah, just one moment. Now, can you calm down a little bit and tell me the name of the street you live in? We work on the principle, if it comes in, it goes out. And then that's, that's the art of our communication. The messages come into us and we put them out. And we don't really have a lot of time to go back saying, well, what happened to that message? What, what was the final result? Did that man go for trial that was arrested with a gun? Um, we haven't got time because the calls are coming in all the time. Hello, it's the police got on your arm. May I help you? Yeah, listen, I'm not being rude, but I'm trying to contact... It sounds like Kingston Police. Well, you've rung 999. That gets you through to the emergency service, sir. What's your problem? I'm trying to find something ill. I'm trying to get hold of uh, Richmond Kingston Police. Yeah, you can't do that on the 999 system, sir, so can I help you? Well, yes, because my boy's involved in a bit of a problem. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this, but... Well, you'll have to tell me what you want, otherwise I can't help you, you see. You see, this is the emergency room. It's not a switching centre. This right. is so pathetic, no. isn't it, this system? No, it's not pathetic at all. I'm sorry if you don't understand it, but if you want the local police station, you just have to dial their telephone number and ring them. 999 is for emergencies, and, and that's what I am. I'm the emergency yeah, one. Are we trying to fucking contact yeah, it, You don't have to actually swear, and if you want a telephone number, what you have to do is look in the telephone directory or ring director of inquiries. But they do don't you, give it. Do you? Yes, they do. Do you, have a do you actually have an emergency? No. Well, if you don't have an emergency, then I can't help you, can I? Oh, well, all right, mate. I'll speak to someone else. Goodbye. And there's another visit to Scotland Yard at the... Thames for nearly 200 years.